Golf Smarter, number 695, is brought to you by Autoslash.com, who can help you find the lowest rate possible for your next car rental. And stay tuned after our conversation to hear how you can get a free online version of Tony Manzoni's complete video of The Lost Fundamental. Let's open the mailbag to answer your golf ball questions with Sam Hogan of TwoGuysWithGolfBalls.com. This is Golf Smarter, sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome back to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Sam. How you doing, Fred? I'm doing great. It's so great to have you back on, and I uh, especially want to thank you on behalf of the Golf Smarter community, the Golf Martyrs, um, for sponsoring Golf Smarter Mulligans and participating in Golf Smarter. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah. No thanks necessary, but yeah, you're very welcome. I enjoy it. I enjoy being a part of it. It's been, uh, it's been great to interact with, uh, with your listeners and your community. Very exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, what we've done for the last month and a half or so has uh, been to ask the community to send in questions about golf balls. If they have any questions about golf balls, about how one plays, uh, what's best for them, what's the difference between A versus B, um, and uh, the questions that I don't even think of. And we have a, a bunch of questions that have come through. And so I uh, want to touch on some of them and see uh, if we can get the answers that people are looking for sounds great let's do it all right well it, uh, i'm just going to go in the order th as uh, in which they came um pretty much and uh start with uh, our old buddy rick petrick who has been a golf smarter member he's he's one of the best ambassadors ever he really is he's yeah. and he's very active with our um teachers and our sponsors and uh, participants. It's been amazing. But anyway, he, he wrote that uh, My Golf Spy came out with their comprehensive ball test using an Iron Byron and Trackman. And there was a 38 yard distance between the longest ball and the shortest, with the average being about 18 yards. You want to comment on that? Yeah, first off, yeah, uh, Rick's great. I, I We've had some, um, he's, he's a VIP customer of uh, two guys with golf balls.com and uh, he's been an ambassador for uh, our business as well. So it's great to see the connection there. Um, and after this question came through, uh, we've had additional dialogue and, and he's done some amazing testing um, of his own and, and got some great results. So, uh, but, but particularly to talk about the 38 yard distance, that's reality. I mean, it's, depending on, you know, there's so many factors within the golf game and, and a lot of them drive us crazy. But at the end of the day, there are so many factors that determine distance off the tee, distance with your irons. And to, to uh, comprehend that a golf ball could actually absolutely give you that much distance, it is reality. Getting to that point is tough. And that's where and, and frankly expensive. And so that's where the approach that I have tried to take is to do it on a level that isn't going to cost thousands of dollars and isn't going to drive you absolutely crazy because yeah, 38 yards distance, it absolutely matters and it will make a difference on your score. But at the same time, in order to get there, a lot of us don't have those resources to get to that point. Um, and I think that there actually I know there's plenty of information and detail out there that can get us closer to that without having to utilize all those resources. When you're saying it gets expensive, what specifically do you mean? So it, it, for, for when he when talks about TrackMan, so TrackMan's a, you know, if anyone watches the US yeah. Open, all that all that detail on this TrackMan, right? I don't have to go into detail about that. But now how about how do we get as amateurs on on TrackMan, well, you either have to buy a TrackMan or you have to go somewhere who has a TrackMan or you have to buy something that has a GPS device enabled um, with it. There, there are plenty of new GPS, GPS type of devices that track all these different things, but there's an expense to all of that. And so um, 
on our website, we've promoted some of, of these things, uh, these GPS devices or some of these tracking devices, because there's there's hundreds out there, especially as technology gets better and better. Um, but at the same time, there's a cost to all of that. And so that that's what I mean by that. Um, you know, if you go to a golf tech, let's say they, they will do all of this. Um, they'll track all of this and, and, you, and, and then they'll analyze it. You know, and that's fairly expensive per session. So then you got one session, you got to come back, so on and so forth. So. Okay. Well, plus the fact, um, Iron Byron, it's hard to compare yourself to an Iron Byron because it's a machine that was developed to have the perfect contact with the ball, with the, with the perfect swing as it's been developed over the decades. Um, and so it's incredibly consistent. Well, we can't compete with that. Right. Correct. That's a great point. And, and again, if you, if you want to do that and want to go with it, it's great. And I will help anyone through that whole process. But our, the average golfer, they don't, let's say if they want to go get a lesson, they don't want their complete swing broken down and ripped away and start over and invest five to 10 years <laughs> in, in, in having a new swing. They want their current swing tweaked a little bit so they can start seeing improved scores. And, and, that, and that's where I think is similar uh, of this type of question and in, in, um, in how we would approach um, the overall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also want to uh, talk about just for a moment that the two guys with golf balls dot com the website that you have uh it's not just sale of used golf balls premium used golf balls you also have a blog on there so a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about you've probably addressed in the blog already right absolutely that, that that's a great point fred and I, I thank you for bringing that up because everything happens to a golf ball when you put spin on that ball and so after our, our recent uh, podcast and some of the questions came through, uh, we decided to publish a blog specifically explaining everything that uh, about golf ball spin and, and how it works and, and, and why, it, why it happens and, and what try to avoid. And so, yeah, it, that's a great point and that's a great reference to start up. First, you got to understand why you're hooking, why you're slicing, why the Frankly, the ball goes straight, why the ball goes far, why it goes short. And all of those can be explained through spin. And it's, and it's a complete ov- overview of spin, uh, golf ball spin in that blog. Mm-hmm. Mm. Awesome. All right, let's get to the next question, which uh, is a simple one. Um, Russell Santarelli was wondering about the Callaway Magna golf balls. Yeah, and a, a quick little correction: it's actually Callaway Super Soft Magnet oh. Golf Ball. It's a new ball that that Callaway came out this year, and it's actually an oversized Super Soft Golf Ball. Whoa, so whoa, whoa. what do you mean oversized? It's larger than a standard golf ball. Huh? Yep. Can they and do so that? They can, and and what they claim is that. It still adheres to the USGA specs. Now that I, I have not verified that, uh, Callaway claims that. Um, but what the the idea is is for this ball to be used for very beginner uh, golfers. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be absolute. I mean, it's a bigger ball, easy easier to hit, more forgiving. Does it fit and in the hole? <laughs> supposedly it does. <laughs> I would think so, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's it was interesting, and I was reading some of the um, the thoughts that Callaway had in producing this, and it was fascinating because I, I guess I had never looked at it from that angle of let's. It's kind of like the brush tee. I don't know if you remember the brush tee that's been out there, where it's you know even if you miss hit on on, on the brush tee, you're still able to hit it straight, supposedly. But it's it's more forgiving, and it's it's there's more consistency with this ball just because it's larger. So um, we haven't tested it. I haven't played with it. Again, it just came out this year. And usually um, we're kind of a year behind in the actual testing of the balls that are new um, for obvious reasons. But uh, I'm excited to dig more into this and see uh, after a year's under our belt what happens. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, it's still a two-piece ball. You know, which is a low compression ball, 
uh, very similar, uh, very similar to the super soft. And so if, if anyone has used a super soft ball uh, or something like an E6 in, in that, in that middle of the road range, um, this ball is going to be similar to that. It's just, it's just larger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Size of a softball. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's just marketing, but either way, yeah, it's something new we got, we got to work on and we got to try out. Have That's you ever it. tried to hit a tennis ball with a golf club? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Actually. I have too. <laughs> I get my dog to chase it. <clears throat> right. I think I pulled a muscle in my back, but yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, another thing that I want to bring up since we're talking about individual balls and, you know, there's a lot of balls in the market that don't get the attention that Titleist gets because Titleist spends a ton of money on advertising and, you know, they get a lot of the tour players to play them. So people think, well, if the tour player is going to play it, then I want to as well. But there are other balls out there that, you know, people like that we don't hear much about. So I'm going to just throw out some names and you respond to each one, if you don't mind. And that would be, we'll sure. start with vice. I think a, a vi vice is a great ball. Um, oh, I, let me, let me start over. Vice is a, a great company that has come out with uh, some great individual varieties of golf balls. Mm. Um, they, they have from, from all aspects, from beginners to, to very, very low handicaps. And um, it, it's a new one. That's been out the last few years, and it continues to grow uh, year after year. And, and I'm a big fan of Vice golf balls. Volvic. Uh, you know, Volvic, they were very popular years ago with the Symmetra Tour players. They sponsored it, and now uh, they, they got some great publicity with uh, the, the long drive winner. Uh, I'm not I think it was, I believe it was last year, um, met him down at the PGA merchandising show this past uh, January, but uh, he used their ball and that has been come, become more and more popular, but specifically their niche that where they started and now they're evolving is colored balls. So as I mentioned earlier, is this, you know, 2019 is the year of the colored balls where uh, we're seeing brand new varieties of golf balls with all different colors. Uh, I found a, a Callaway Supersoft blue golf ball the other day, which <laughs> I think it was the first time I saw a blue. I found a blue golf ball other than at the uh, um, miniature golf uh, the course. Putting, yeah, the, yes, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> uh, space there. Miniature golf thinking. course, right? So yeah, um, so yeah, that's vault. That's vault, but, but their quality is great, and uh, they got a lot of different varieties, and that's why you won't see a lot of Volvo like, on our website yet just because of the fact that they have so many different varieties in order to find uh, and recover high volume of uh, each variety, it's been a little challenging. But next year, the following, you'll see it more and more. Strata. Strata. It, that, it's, it's, a, it's a beginner golf ball. It's uh, low compression. It's one piece, two piece. It's, it's just a lower... Uh, consistent. It's it's going to compare to a, a pinnacle, uh, top flight type golf ball. And when you say pinnacle top flight, are, those are two different balls, though, right? Correct. That that type of a brand. Two different brands. That, that level. Yeah. yeah. Compression and in in uh, makeup and so on and so forth. Okay. If, if you think about it, the the way that I talk about golf balls is in three kind of tiers. You're going to have the good, better, best. And in three different levels from compression standpoint. Um, and that's how we write the blogs. Again, I want to create an approach that's easy for every golfer, amateur golfer to understand and comprehend and have, have some solid takeaways that's going to uh, educate them, but then help them in their game at least a little bit. Srixon. Srixon. I really like Srixon. Um, once, once you figure out how to pronounce the name um, and, and don't feel like, <laughs> like you're butchering it every time, yep. um, which in the beginning is tough. It's a great company. It's a great a golf ball. They, um, it, they just, I wish they did more marketing, frankly, because their name isn't out there enough and it is hard to understand and pronounce, but they have, they have great quality, uh, all their products. I really like the Strix on, uh, their levels of equipment and uh, golf balls specifically the um, the Z star tour is their 
highest end golf ball. Um, and then uh, Q star and so on and so forth. But it, it's a, it's an up and coming company. Uh, as soon as they get some uh, marketing and, and a better marketing budget, maybe, I don't know. Um, you're going to hear their name uh, more and more every year. Awesome. And here's one that um, I'm just sad that, that this doesn't get more traction, uh, mainly because tour players aren't playing them. But tell us about Dixon balls. Um, Dixon balls. It's, it's a completely quote unquote green golf ball. Um, yeah, tour, tour pros are not playing this ball that I know of. Um, I haven't heard much about it. it it's a newer company. Not sure how old it is, but it's, uh, it, it's a good ball. It's, it's going to be in that medium level, I'd say, um, of a golf ball, but, uh, but yeah, what they're doing, what that company's doing is, is great. And, and I'm a big supporter. We just don't see a lot of them uh, yeah. at all. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I did a lot of, uh, work with them early on in the podcast and, um, they have different kinds of ball. They have the Dixon earth, uh, the Dixon air, the Dixon wind and the fire, or is it fire, wind and earth? And, um, you know, the fire is their high end ball and it, it compares to a pro V and the Dixon earth was kind of like an NXT tour, uh, ball from Titleist, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. a Bridgestone E six. And yeah, it's a comp- completely green golf ball in the sense that they don't make, uh, they don't make it with any harsh metals in the ball so that if you do lose it, it goes into the water, goes into the woods. It doesn't do, uh, it doesn't deteriorate there but it doesn't leave any harmful metals or anything in the environment. And they take the used ones. They have a buyback program. They take the used ones and they uh, make, you know, like playground equipment and stuff out of it, like you see with tires and things like that. Wow, that's fascinating. I didn't know that much about them, but I love it. Yeah, they're a great company. Yeah. Um, And that's what I was playing with exclusively until I moved into this house and have been getting, you know, balls fall out of my trees in in the backyard. (laughs) Let's take a quick time out. We'll be right back. All right, Sam. Uh, We still have more questions that uh, people are sending in that I think are great questions. And I'm I'm really excited to be able to ask for your advice because I can't answer them. Uh, uh, this one's from Eric Blankenship and he said, Sam made a comment about spin being the enemy of the amateur. He wants to hear your thoughts on what type of balls you would recommend for high handicappers, what characteristics to look for and or avoid. He's been playing the Kirkland three piece ball for the past year. And he, while he loves the price point, he'd be open to trying something different if, uh, you can, you know, well. That's what the point of two guys with golf balls dot com is is to get the high end ball at a at a reasonable price point and he's only yep. in his third season as a golfer but uh, so he's still in his honeymoon phase trying lots of new things. What can you tell him all right so it, again I'm very general looking at what why you slice and the answer is pretty simple is that there's a tremendous amount of right side spin or left if you're or lefty uh, on that golf ball. And, and so that's at impact. So when the club comes through the ball, whether the face is open, uh, whether you have a, um, the, the point of impact is, is not square, you're going to exhibit a potential slice or a hook on a golf ball. So that's, that's side spin. So that's what happens. So depending on why that ball gets that side spin on it is the reason why it's it slice and how to really improve it. That being said, if we look at just the answering the golf ball side of it, a lower spinning ball, meaning a three piece or a two piece ball is usually going to be the best level of a golf ball to play for amateurs that uh, have a tendency to slice or hook and when I say a tendency, the majority of their shots, you know, one or two slices or hooks are around. That's that's actually pretty good. That means your ball striking and that impact, uh, the club face at impact is is square or close to square. But it, but if every single shot or 90 percent, 80 percent of your shots uh, don't go relatively straight, 
then you need to start looking, I think, at a lower spinning ball. And a lower spinning ball is exactly what it means and what it, what it says. It, it spins less. It's manufactured to spin less. And the reason why we didn't play in the U.S. Open last week and why we're amateurs is because we don't have the perfect impact on the ball when – I'm sorry, we don't have the perfect square club impact when we swing and hit that golf ball. If we did, we'd have perfect backspin on it and it would go straight in exactly where our target is. And and that's why lower spinning golf balls for the majority of uh, your shot that you're going to either go right or left, that's the way to go. And as soon as you get into the four piece golf ball or five piece golf ball, uh, like the example is Pro V1 and Pro V1X are a four-piece golf ball. There, you're going to have more spin on those golf balls. I think the Kirkland three-piece ball is a great ball. Really? Uh, yeah. Even so the newer, you, the you new version, at, right after the, the newer, lawsuit. That, that's the new one. Yep, that's the new one. Um, that's the one they're going uh, with and, and, and going forward with uh, at this point is a great ball. It, it, it compares really well to a, uh, the Tour Soft from uh, Titleist, which is the NXT, the newer version of the NXT ball. Mm. Uh, E6 golf ball, super soft golf ball, very similar characteristics and um, what you're going to get out of that ball. Mm. Okay. But, 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 but I have to comment on one thing. It, one of the reasons why we started the site, I think everyone should have the ability to try a Pro V1. Why not? Give it a try. Is it worth it? Is it not? Maybe maybe your swing speed, maybe your 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 club face and impact, maybe it works well. I don't know. There's an emotional piece that <laughs> when you're a golfer, right? You know, I don't want to get in too much of, of, of my head or everyone else's head, but it makes you feel good playing a, a, a more higher end ball that you know everyone else is playing. And I'm not saying that's why you got to try it, but I think you should try something. And, and for half the price, why not try it? And if it doesn't work out, you can go back. But I, I don't know. I, I like trying new things and, and I like testing things. But overall, based on what the question is, I, I think where you're at it is a great level of golf ball. So the reason Sam said pay half the price is that basically uh, he, has, he breaks it down into three categories of balls, the eagle birdie and par and eagle is basically a brand new ball it's been hit once it landed softly in the woods and then the guy couldn't find it and ends up on uh, sam's front door and you can get pro v1s at half the price of a brand new ball but let me remind you that when you're checking out at two guys with golf com, that if you use Golf Smarter at checkout, you're going to get an additional 10% off, and you're going to get that every time you go there um, for every purchase, and that's going to expire not until April of 2020. So take advantage of that and tell your friends. we got to help yes. Sam with his business here. Okay, yeah. please? <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll send you some great balls, I promise. Yeah. 100% guaranteed if you don't like them. For well, any well, actually, so why not? So Eric had an, uh, a part two to his question it was more of a request and i'm going to take this one on he said have you ever considered selling a sampler of used balls he said as a new golfer i would love to get a mixed dozen of different balls to try out and if you had a pre-selected dozen of balls he'd recommend for a high handicapper or perhaps one of these days a mid handicapper he says uh I, he'd be a very happy customer while i can of course buy a sleeve of new balls at the course let's be honest, I can lose them, two of them in a pond on consecutive swings. And that is exactly why I, I don't like the idea of a sampler. I, um, as I said, I've been playing Pro V1X. And I had, I ordered a, a, a dozen AVX, the Titleist AVX balls from Sam. And I really um, don't think if I had one ball, I would have learned anything. I really did need to go through a dozen balls, and I got a bunch of rounds in. That was good. And um, I, I think that my scores actually went up a little bit with that AVX. I like the ball, but versus the, the Pro V1X, I think that my scores were a bit, a bit higher. And so I'm just going to blame the ball because over a period of time, you can really compare. 
Yeah, Fred, I couldn't have said it better myself. I agree with you. Um, consistency it reminds me of when a few years ago and I, and I was watching something on Jordan Spieth and, and he had a new driver. Maybe it was the Masters. I think maybe the fourth round he got a new driver or something. And they said, do you feel comfortable with this new driver? Do you really know where you're at with it? He said, I don't feel comfortable with a driver or really know what differences it has in my swing until I hit it, hit it 5,000 times. Wow. And maybe it was six, but, but it was a significant amount of swings with that. And that was really telling me, stuck with me, obviously, if, to your point, it, it goes back to why we're amateurs. How often do we have consistent ball strikes? Is it always in the middle? Is it always on the side? Hmm. It's always in the heel, the toe. Where, where is it? And, and to play a few rounds with, with it or through a dozen I, I agree with you 100% that that's how you're going to be able to get a, a real feel of what the ball does for you. Because just, just hitting one ball, what if what if you slice it? What if you hit it down the middle that time? That's not going to determine what overall the, the largest percentages of where that ball is going to go for you. Mm-hmm. And what does that tell you about if you uh, try your friend's club with a swing and you hit it down the <laughs> middle? You're like, okay, I'm going to go out and buy this club. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> do yeah, and, and um, I'm guilty of that. I did that with a putter. I yeah, I put it really well, so I went and bought it, and, and I ended up hating it. So yeah, do not do that. Um, <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> we actually um, th- there was an episode that we did many years ago. I think the title of it was "If um, You Like Your Friends Club, Buy That One." Because no two clubs are exactly the same, <laughs> and, and and this was a guy, a retailer. Um, equipment retailer who who said that look if you try your friend's club and you like the way it plays just try to buy that off of him because if you go to the store you're not going to get the same club and basically just get fit for a ball uh, clubs just get fit yeah and not to get too far off topic uh, my idol golf idol Ben Hogan um, he played with wooden clubs yeah. and he had the highest swing speed and he was one of the best golfers of all time and so look at what we have now compared to what the though he played with or other golfers in his era and they they still did pretty good at that game of golf so keep that in perspective i'd say yeah yeah all right jim cunningham had three questions and let's do them individually he wants to know if a used pro v1 and again we talked about the eagle birdie and par qualities from you let's just say uh uh not an eagle, but a birdie quality pro v1 is it still better than a brand new nxt tour Yes, absolutely. And the reason why is be, is laws is like like you mentioned, it's it's the good, uh, the birdie or the eagle quality that the inside of the ball is what makes up what a pro v one is. And, and better is relative, but at the same time, when you compare the two golf balls, and if you are used to playing a pro v one, and that's your ball, and that's what gives you the best success and, and the lowest scores then the answer is absolutely yes. Do not do not go to the NXT Tour just because you've played a few rounds with uh, with the Pro V1. Now, if there's a, a huge uh, cart path mark that or a slice in the cover and that integrity of that, that ball is compromised, then a brand new NXT Tour, I guess, would, um, would be better than that because that's when really the, uh, the golf ball changes when it gets to that point where there's some damage to that ball. Well, that's interesting. Um, how much damage is enough damage to a ball that we should say, mm, yeah, I'm not going to play this used ball that I found? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good question. And we have... Um, and that's not Jim's question, up. that's mine. <laughs> no, that's a great question. And, and I'm glad you asked it because it's, it's good follow-up. Where we've gone out, and, and, and our competitors have done it as well. There's, there's a ton of, of information out there on the, the results of... of testing that you've done in all the three qualities or five qualities or whatever and until even our par quality performed very close to the the birdie and the eagle um with the distance and with um the performance of the ball you only lost i think it was four four or five yards in the par quality and, and to amateur golfers that that's not significant enough that's really gonna um hurt our overall scores what some fee, uh, feedback that I had or that other people is that who wants to play with a big, you know, uh, asphalt ball mark though on the ball, it just doesn't look fun. It doesn't look appealing. And, and then, uh, 
but but overall, it, it, until it gets to the point where that cover has as is cut or or slit, the performance is going to be very similar. Hmm. But what about on the putting green? What about when you're rolling the ball? Um, what what impact does the cuts and the scrapes and the cart path marks and the tree marks, the blemishes there, does that yeah. is there an impact on that on the putting green? That's where you're you're going to see a little bit of that if if it has that that slice in the ball, you know, a cart path mark that's still smooth it's still going to be okay. It's going to roll. Think about rolling a, a basketball or, or any kind of ball. If there's a, a huge slit in it, it might kick right or left. But if it's just, if it, if the, if the, if the cover of that ball is smooth and feels smooth, there isn't any rough pieces of it, then you're not going to have any problems on, on the, um, on the green. Okay. Uh, part two of his question, uh, a used, 2019 Pro V1 is it better than a new 2015 Pro V1? Based on what I said earlier, not having any significant damage to the cover, yes, I would absolutely say it would be. And the fact of it is, is that the third, three generate or two generations ahead of the technology that's out there. That's why if someone asked me, Sam, how, how often should I buy new clubs, golf clubs? I would say three to five years hmm. because thinking about how technology changes. And that's one thing why I respect Titleist that they only come out with a new pro V every two years. Uh, and many competitors out there come out with something every year just for the marketing piece of it. They actually go through the, the R and D to find new and advances in technology that can help golf balls perform better. Um, now, that quote unquote better performance isn't going to be something significant, but as long as it's in that quality where that cover is still basically smooth and feels real good and there's not huge uh, marks or slick slits in, in the cover. Yes. It's going to perform better just for the fact of there's better technology and, and they're manufacturing um, a better golf ball three years later. And then Jim's final question is uh, about, a, f- a guy with a five handicap, does he benefit from playing a new go- golf ball for every round? Is it the good players, not tour players, but the good amateurs, you know, single digit, um, do, is it better for them to play a new ball every round or does it not make a difference in your opinion? I think, I think all our listeners can answer that question based on my, my two previous answers. And that answer is no. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the same, same reasoning behind the previous two questions where um, as long as you still feel like like you're playing a, a good ball and you feel good about that ball, then go ahead and play with it. This episode is supported by Autoslash.com, the free online rental booking hack that tracks your upcoming reservations, then finds the lowest rates for your next car rental. Recently, I was telling you that my wife and I are going to Boston in a couple weeks to visit with her family. At first, We were going to rent a car for the entire time we were there, but as we continue to talk about it, we've decided we're going to cut back to just having a car for a couple of days. Now, the good news is that I'm still getting a pretty good head start on the booking process, which, according to CEO Jonathan Weinberg, is only going to be a greater benefit for savings. We've got customers who will get, you know, if they're booking ahead of time, let's say at least two weeks or so, they could be getting three, four or five price drops and customers who are booking farther out could be getting even more. So the potential for savings are very, very significant. So do me and your wallet a favor. Next time you're planning on renting a car for business or pleasure, check out autoslash.com. That's A U T O. S-L-A-S-H, auto slash dot com. This next question that comes from uh, Thomas Oliver, uh, and it came to us on Twitter. Um, you kind of answered it before, and I'm sure you can touch on it briefly again, but he says that uh, he's a 20 handicap playing the Callaway Super Soft. His swing speed is high. He hits the ball 270 off the tee with his driver, but he struggles with the slice on the longer clubs. He's considering switching to a Bridgestone E6 versus the Callaway Supersoft. Is that ball going to make the difference in his slice? 
you're going to get the same uh, performance of Callaway Super Soft than E6. If you if you really want to make a golf ball change to limit that slice, especially the longer clubs, I would suggest going down a level to um, either a pinnacle or a top flight or something like that. The fact of the matter is you're slicing the top, you're slicing in the longer clubs just because the club is longer and it's harder to hit square on that, on that golf ball. And if you read the blog, it explains much more in detail. And, and, I, and I don't want to take all of the time here, but that is the reason why you're slicing that side spin you're putting on that ball. Um, going to a less spinning ball will help that, uh, but it's more about club impact and the club face at impact than actual the golf ball at that point. But great job, 270 drive. That's huge. That's a yeah. huge drive. <laughs> and we can have that double-checked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> David, yeah, it's, it's like the guys, the guys that say, oh, I'm not a good golfer, but I'm 250 down the middle every time. Well, if you hit 250 down the middle every time, you're a pretty good golfer. You're a pretty good golfer, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, people, are you a good golfer? My wife chimes in quickly. Oh, he's a good golfer. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm not a good golfer, but I'm not bad. That's right. how I answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's a good way answer. to do it. Um, David Comey says that he's a bogey golfer with a tendency to slice. He says, I'm sure you've heard this one before. What golf ball would be best for me to use? Well, I think we've answered that, David. Yeah. Fix think, your swing. I think we have. <laughs> <laughs> But, but Sorry, if, if you're if you aren't able to do that, um, on on the spin blog that I that we wrote, um, that middle of the road, so it's E six, the super soft, the the tour soft, those are the the middle of the road type uh, golf balls that that are going to spin have medium spin on it. The lower spin, the lowest and lowest spinning golf balls are going to be what I mentioned earlier, the pinnacle, the you know the top flight, those types of 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 golf balls and and it, those low medium or high spin goes with price point too so when in doubt you forget what i said or or, or what the research shows or the detail it's based on price if there if it's a low end price it's going to be a low spinning golf ball a medium price is going to be a medium spinning golf ball a high price is going to be a high spinning golf ball hmm. so um that's just a rule of thumb to make it easy great and our last question, uh, Jacob Strife, he, um, he wrote this on YouTube. Now, uh, let me just comment about that. Every, of the, every one of the new Golf Smarter episodes uh, and Golf Smarter Mulligans, they go to our Golf Smarter TV YouTube channel as well. And a lot of people listen to podcasts on YouTube. And what's fun about it is that people can leave comments there. And Jacob writes that I'm almost certain Sam is incorrect. He's challenging you here, buddy, uh, about mm, less, right. less spin helps amateurs slicing. He says, this is a common misconception that you need to bring up in the next episode because it is very misleading to the listeners who might, who might what, uh, have, um, have gone out and bought low spinning balls. More spin means that Axis tilt on the ball is harder to achieve, the backspin spin axis. This is why it's easier to slice low lofted clubs because lower loft means less spin. Would you like to address that? Sure. Overall, when you think about why you slice, it means that you are putting side spin on that golf ball, whether it's right or left. That's the only way those balls are going to slice or they're going to hook. Do you agree with that, Fred? No Have comment. Have the side spin on it? Yeah, Okay. Sure. Well, all the research shows everything that's out there is the reason why you slice is because you exhibit a tremendous amount of side spin at club impact. And again, it's in the blog. Read it, please, listeners. Read it because it's there. It explains it. You've got to understand spin. No difference if you're playing ping pong and you come through and you try to spin that ball to the right or left. It's right or left side spin. It's just that is exactly why you slice or hook. So at the end of the day, if you have a tendency to slice or if you have a tendency to hook, in the majority of your shots, like I remember I said earlier, 
90 or 80 percent of your shots, even 70, don't go straight. That means that the majority of all your shots, you're putting right or left side spin on. So in a, a very high level overall for amateur golfers that have a tendency not to hit it perfectly straight every time, a lower spinning golf ball is going to limit how far you slice it right and how far you hook it left. That That's just physics of why a golf ball goes to the right or left with spin. Putting limited amount of side spin on a shot, they call that a fade. Putting the minimum amount of, I'm sorry, right side spin, minimum amount of left side spin, they call that a draw. They like that. But at the end of the day, it's all about spin, side spin, right or left. Less A, a ball that spins less is absolutely going to slice less, hook less. And there you have it. So listen, um, this is something I would like to do on a regular basis. So please, just because you didn't hear your question answered, send us your questions. We'd like to do this every couple months. Um, compile these questions from you and see if we get the right answer that you're looking for and help you out. But also, I uh, want you to know that if you're going to um, go to twoguyswithgolfballs.com, there's two ways that you need to do this. One, go to twoguyswithgolfballs.com. Um, the other way to do it is just go to our show notes or our blog or the front page of golfsmarter.com, and we have links that will send you right to twoguyswithgolfballs.com. And uh, again, use Golf Smarter at checkout. Not only will you get great prices, you'll get an additional 10% off. Sam, I really enjoyed doing this with you. I learned so much every time. Thank you again for all your support for the Golf Smarter community. Thank you very much, Fred. I enjoy it, and I can't wait for uh, the next episode and the next time we can do this because knowledge is power and Hopefully I can help uh, your community. That's all I'm trying to do and, and have a lot of fun doing it. So thanks again. And don't forget that our next giveaway is the next episode. And it's for a dozen golf balls of your choice. I don't think you're going to want to choose 12 different kinds of golf balls either. <laughs> anyway, it's a dozen balls, any ones that you want, your choice, that's courtesy of Sam and twoguyswithgolfballs.com. Deadline for entry is midnight Pacific time, 3 a.m. Eastern, Sunday, June 30th, 2019. Sign up at golfsmarter.com and click on the Enter Now banner at the top of the homepage. This week on Golf Smarter Mulligans, we bring back an episode that's focused on golf fitness and exercise with fitness expert and instructor Mike Peterson. Get your free subscription for Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans wherever you get your favorite podcasts, including now YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and of course, Apple Podcasts. Golf Smarter Mulligans is supported by Autoslash.com and TwoGuysWithGolfBalls.com. And I'd like to repeat my offer from last episode for a free online version of Tony Manzoni's video, The Lost Fundamental. All I ask is that you submit an honest review for either Golf Smarter or Golf Smarter Mulligans from wherever you subscribe to either show. If you post it on so social media, that's a good, that's pretty good. But putting your comments at the place where you get the podcast has a much greater impact because when potential new listeners are searching for golf podcasts, your referral carries a lot more influence. Well, Unless you have thousands of people who are following you on social media, then please, if you do use social media, include a link to the show or a specific episode with your review, and then let me know. Now, once you've posted your review, uh, email me a copy and where you published it. Then once I see it online, I'll send you the link with my compliments. It's definitely a win-win for both of us because reviews and word of mouth are the best way for podcast listeners to check out both Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans for the first time. And hopefully, like you, all they need is one. It's kind of like those old Lay's potato chips, right? You can't listen to just one. <laughs> Lastly, if, if we did not address your golf ball questions or concerns in this episode, well, let's do it again. Submit it. Submit your question or your comment. 
And we're planning to do these mailbag episodes with Sam. Uh, we'll do another one in a couple months. Submit any question you like by using hashtag golf smarter or hashtag two guys with golf balls on social media or by clicking on the golf ball questions button on the homepage at golfsmarter.com.